got a lot going on, a little bit here and there. How you feeling? Um, good. You know, the next day we we moving steady along. You know, the way things shaking out. Yeah, this is part of it. This is where it's getting kind of boring, but not really. I mean, this is like speculation time. Like this is like when stuff slow down. You just got to go by the little news that you get. Yeah, but it's interesting. Yeah. So first on the board, we got Mikel Bridges. Um, the trade is final. Um, we send Shake Milton to the Nets. And Deuce is staying home. So for Nick fans, that's a win. Yeah, that's definitely a win. Yeah. We were excited to hear that. So. <laughs> yeah, because with a dude that we all know what Bridges is going to bring to the table. But that also kept us from getting caught up in that first apron. Mm -hmm. So now we have flexibility. Okay. Now we can do some things. So um, that's why somebody, they, they knew all along somebody else was going in the trade. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of who it was. I like the fact that even though his mention, Deuce's name was first floating out there, mm -hmm. I like the fact that they decided, no, we're not, we're not trading. Not for that. Mm -hmm. So that was good for the Knicks. And good sign for Maddie. Yeah, it seems like um, when I was talking to the fellas, it seems like if we hear the rumor before it happens, it seems like it's not going to happen. <laughs> no, Nick, because it seems like they secret it. Like, well, every time they just speculate, say, they said we were going to get Paul George. Or oh, Paul George is on the board, on the box list. It doesn't happen. But then Mikael Bridges comes out of left field, like, yeah, we thought they were talking about taking him. But it just happened just like yeah, that. Yeah, Paul George, too, he don't really fit the time now. Because mm -hmm. sometimes when people are talking about what we might do, mm -hmm. a lot of times it's a wish list, yeah. but like in the OG trade or the Bogdanovich, those was wish lists, mm -hmm. wish lists that came true. Right. So all speculations, there's some some credence to it because GMs ask about everybody. Mm -hmm. So something's going to get out. The minute you inquire about somebody, mm -hmm. but but PG just didn't really fit the age timeline with our guy. So we can we can run this thing for three four years. Mm -hmm. Without making a major, major move. Right. As a matter of fact, now that you say that, I just want to bring something up to uh who was it? Again with uh from Golden State. What's the name? Clay? The drunk uh, Draymond. Draymond. He said exactly what you said. If we go three years and nothing happens, it was a bust and then we ain't got no picks and then we gotta start trading everybody. Not true. Like <laughs> Yeah. It's almost like you at the end of your career, so you just trying to start trouble now. Yeah, because even with them, it, it started somewhere, even with when they was making their rise, mm. um, really with Mark Jackson, even before Mark came, when they started making their little rise. Mm. You know, they was they was all since nobody. Yeah, we knew we want people wanted Steph, but he wasn't like a household name. Mm. And what what um Kerr did when he came in mm. is that he just swapped out David Lee and Andre Dadalia mm. and started him and, and Barnes. Mm. So now that strengthened their bench, mm. and it gave them more more credibility as a team because David Lee and and and, and Andre they were veterans, mm. so they was going to get their shot. So even he for him to say that that had to also have been done for them. So that I just that was for him to say that is wild nonsense. Because just, just a couple of years ago they were saying you was done, you should be traded, and Clay was done. Yeah, and they should rebuild from there because Steph Curry's the only one that still got gas in the tank. Mm. It's y'all that's messing up the team. Yeah. What you talking about? Yeah, but even after they'll, this, they'll, they'll after, say there'll still be a dynasty after this for one little piece change every day. Yeah, but what you should what, what Draymond should realize that when people were saying that, they end up coming back winning the championship. You know, after Clay's injury. Mm -hmm. So that that's that's just adding fuel to the fire mm -hmm. to make yourself be one of the best Nick haters. Because there's yeah. no way you can sit there thinking three years down the line. We in it right now to win it. But for you to be hitting like that when y'all done, it's crazy. I can see if y'all won last year. <laughs> or, got, or got to the playoffs. <laughs> to say that right now, y'all. Yeah, is it, yeah it's nah. Crazy. We, we doing, we on the right trajectory to, to put ourselves mm -hmm. for years to come. Because these guys are young. Right. And, and so when you when you bring in young guys up under them and you get them a little bit of exposure, mm -hmm. you keep that pipeline going. We can, we, we can run this three, four years. And mm -hmm. the fact that he even said three years, Tells you we doing something right. Mm -hmm. Cause we ain't blowing it up next year like the Nets had this year with their big three. So yeah, Draymond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get up out of here. Yeah. Um, real quick, um, like, comment, and subscribe. I thank you to all the new subscribers and the views we get. We really appreciate.
Appreciate y'all. Yeah, keep this thing going. Yeah, we did pick up five, what, five or six more last five week. Five or six so. more, so I'm glad to see y'all here. Welcome to the family. <laughs> All right, let's talk about, let's get into the future of Nick rookies. Um, first one we got on the list is, uh, I guess, one of the fan favorites, Tyler Colet, um, point guard. I don't really got details of where they came from, but he just now signed a contract. Four years, $9 million, $6 million guaranteed. Which, which also they say is the highest contract in the history of a second round pick. That's crazy, that's crazy. So, remember all well, the talk then, about Bronny, didn't he get a guarantee? Bronny get a guarantee though? Bronny got a guarantee four years, but this his must be more. They I both mean, they both two something, mm. but his must be a little bit more. Cause they said the highest. I mean they did say that's gonna be the standard going forward. Rich Paul. He said a lot of players get it, it's just never been televised like that. I don't know. I, I, that's a lot for I mean somebody gotta fact check Rich Paul on that to see how many players have gotten a guaranteed contract. Out the gate. Out the gate. Yeah. And he's saying that, like it's a normal thing, not for everybody, probably for like maybe not for Deuce, but maybe for So most people they yeah, I think they get one one in one in the one in the options, cause mm. nah, that's that's crazy. And I'm not saying his contract is crazy, because mm. obviously they wanted him, there was talk that they even wanted him at twenty four. Mm. But it was like why? So they did good. I mean you give him for what they planning to do with him. Mm. And I'm really not going by Big East player, Big East player of the year. Mm. And that holds a lot of water. But remember when we got uh, Obi, mm. Obi was college, Obi was college basketball player of the year, and stuff mm. like that. So that don't really, you know, mm. <laughs> that don't really mean nothing no more. It's all the system that you play in. But they also feel that another reason why they didn't go after Lowry, not just the age, but that he's the same type of dog that Lowry is. He can do all the same little things that Lowry can do. So I'm happy with that. We still yeah, have these. If they believe in him like that, and I'm not gonna go against their word no more. I might not agree with it. I don't know where another guard fits into what we got going on for everybody to get the playing time. Well, he's gonna, gonna, gonna spend a lot of time down. Jesus. And McBride, I, we want to see him get better. So I mean, yeah, if, they, if he's going to the G League, then sometimes he's gonna, he's gonna, be, on, he gonna be on both. But for G League, sometimes for me, it's just not worth it. Like I. Well, sometimes when they go down to the G League, if it don't translate to the to the game when we need you, I mean, it did for Deuce. And I think Deuce, given the time and opportunity, mm. he'd have been probably doing this a few years ago. I mean, he was next man enough. He sees the moment that we always yeah. talk about. Um, yeah. A lot of injuries, so that was a little different. Um, but that also it lends back to what and Draymond the tips saying. Kind of player. Yeah, but that lends back to what Draymond saying. Uh, if those if the trades don't work out in mm. three three four years. We're gonna be lost. Not if we bring it up young guys like this. Right. How we lost? <laughs> and in three or four years, our guys just they most of them are still gonna be under thirty. Brunson well, is still a, gonna be under thirty. That's one of the moments where it just sounds good. Like yeah. It sounds good, but mm-hmm. uh-huh. um another one that it seems like majority fans love this pick. He's another player I don't know if it fits into the to the mold of cone. His not diet. Either. If that's how you say it now, I'm sorry for messing that up. But he's a forward. He looks pretty solid. Um, this is a player that everybody says is a sleeper. So when you look online and you look in the news, they say he is a sleeper. Now, when I look it up, nothing sticks out wild to me. No? No. I mean, I don't see it for right now, but because he's only 18 years old. But I see I see the way he can pull up. He can two, three dribble pull up. We don't mm-hmm. have guys like that. True. Sure. Now, the closest one now is going to be... Uh, Bridges. But we don't got a whole lot of guys that can bring the ball up and pull up on a dime. Yeah, I don't know if he's small forward or power forward, but yeah, he's a small forward. He's small forward. Yeah, he's like he's a small forward. But he and age see and then age don't mean nothing to me because when you got what's the name coming out to the Spurs and he's like 18 and look what he's doing. Yeah, but we didn't draft him to do nothing right now. So he he probably would spend barely any time mm-hmm. on our big team. They didn't draft him for that. They, they draft mm-hmm. him for the future. So you let him go down to G League, let him go down and get seasoned. Hell, he might just even send him back, but he wants to stay. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing he can do for us right now anyway. Right. You know, he's a young guy. He got legs. He can take the ball off the rim. Mm-hmm. He can bring it up. He can pass. He can shoot. He can do everything an 18-year-old, a lot of 18-year-olds can't do, but playing overseas at a younger age, mm-hmm. he's a, that's a nice guy to have. 
But let, let him play the G, G League. Let him, let him develop. We don't need him. What are we going to do with him? Yeah, true. I mean, like I said in the beginning, this part, rookies, is not my favorite part. Like, the hype of it sometimes, this year we didn't have too much hype. But it's almost like with the team we got right now, it's like who can we put in places to get the ball rolling? Nah, there's no rookie. There's no rookie that can do nothing for us right now unless it was a seven footer. Mm-hmm. Unless it was a banging, active body seven footer. Our team is basically set. So nobody, no rookie's gonna crack Tim's rotation. And he would have to be outstanding. That, now that he say that, segue to Ariel Hot Forty. I don't know how to say your name, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he's a center from Germany that's one of those kind of players that's been pro in his uh, country for a while. That's my favorite pick. He's a yeah. post-scoring. He can pick and roll well. How tall he seems you? like a real big man. How tall is he? Tall. Because <laughs> <laughs> we need, we, 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 we got to get big. We got to get bigger. I'm talking about he's a, now when you watch his highlights, he seems like he's a big body, ready ready to be physical. I got to look at him again. scoring, pick and roll, like he's ready to play right now. Like, I got to like, look at like, him. If Mitch goes down, he seems like he's ready to play and ready for the role from what I watch because he's like already a pro. And you really think Tiz is going to do that? I, I, I got to see him again. I got to say this. Compared to Sims, I'll I take him any day because Sims for me, he just got to mm-hmm. be decent. All right, so I'm, look, I'm gonna look that up. Before I even go any further, like I said, Tyler Colette, guard. You got a lot of people in the point guard, two guard spot. So for him to even get playing time, he's gonna go to the G League. He's gonna develop cool. A cone, a forward, which we now heavy in that spot where we wasn't last year. If everybody come back healthy, he's gonna go to the G League. Yeah, we didn't pick him. We didn't pick him. That's what I'm saying. To play right now. The problem we got right now is the center position. I seen Jericho on a video working out his shot, but we might not need you for that either. You know what I mean? We need you to be a dog and hustle. Um, that's the, that's what we're gonna be missing. Fresh legs running up and down the court. Mm-hmm. Doe Tiff gotta put that in the rotation, but cool. Now with Ariel, he looks like he might not even need the ball. Mm. Maybe pretty intelligent if you go watch the video. Well, yeah, I gotta see it again. Come on, talk to me. Yeah, I got, now I got it. We're going to get back to that next week. Steve, they in trouble. You got to I'm catching got, up and getting I, better. I definitely <laughs> got to see that again because if he's like that mm. and you say he's a big body, if he's a big body and he's rugged, you know, rugged around around the rim, I can see. He's, but a, he's a traditional team. post scorer. Now, with that being said, Tiz might not even put that in rotation because post scoring is not a thing. Only Randall really just does it. We can say Brunson does it, but he does it off the dribble in his own time. Yeah, what we do do well is we do pick and roll a lot, mm-hmm. which he does well, right? We pick and roll, you can throw him the ball, and he can make a move out of the post. Catching alley-oops as well. So that's something that we always did with uh, Mitch and Hartenstein. I'm definitely going to look this So to pick him up and just plug him in, it might just work out in his favor, and him being a pro already – Probably works out. Now, if he's all that and he's and he's six eleven, seven feet, I, I don't think he come. is. I don't think he's like yeah. Jericho Sims. As soon as this show is over, I'm looking him up. I mean, that's for sure. And if I'm wrong, he don't tell me that's the next show. <laughs> that no, I, I ain't gonna say you. No, I'm no, not gonna say no. That's, no, no, that's I, my I, favorite pick. Yeah, out yeah I don't never knock nobody's opinion. Nothing. That's mm-hmm. the whole idea of doing stuff like this. Everybody has their own way for their team. But I'm just saying because I don't know, I can't put it down anyway. Right. I don't never knock nobody what they think a player can do for you. Mm. Um, but I'm now curious to see who this guy is and what he brings to the table. Yeah, I don't see and where could he fit. Much, yeah, where could he fit? Mm. Yeah, because even um um with the guard that we just signed, he he got a lot of the tools, but where you fit? Now we we got to have a third guard on your bench no matter what. Because right. we ran into that in the playoffs. Mm. So Brunson had to sit a game here and there. We have another goal. I'm saying him getting the guaranteed contract. You saying he might go to the G League, and if they comparing him to a veteran in the league that we probably could have used for that morale, is he gonna play sooner well, than we think? They, well, people say he's a sleeper, and I'm going by what the fans say. This is what you guys say. But well, he was and good I in college. Good. I mean, the Big East. You don't, you don't, you don't dominate in the Big East and not be good because you're going against a good guard and a good team pretty mm-hmm. much every single night. 
But you gotta also look at we we making money moves right now. So did we give him that guarantee to keep him, or, or is that later on a part of some sort of a trade? Yeah, true. You know, so we don't we, we can't really say. We know the Knicks is in, in the in the need of backup center mm. and another guard. Right. So and I say could he be the guard? I, I like right now. I like Deuce. Mm. I don't see why right now unless somebody really jump out at you. Um, let's we rock and roll. With, let's hit, we hit the gas running. Because we got our team back. We pretty much got our team back. We hit running and we up 40 points in the yeah. fourth quarter. We're going to need that third guard just to go out there. So if he's sure, that guy, we're going to get 20 points. Yeah, 20 points. Right. Yeah, so that's that's not bad. We're not, you know, this wasn't this wasn't a year of the draft for us. Mm. Not with the team we got. We had bigger needs, bigger priorities. So it didn't really matter. Draft night, I watched it, but I wasn't, mm. I, I wasn't in tune like that because there was nobody that we was going to get that was gonna make a difference for us right yeah. now. So, and you know. Summer League starts, we always look at these players and we like some of the players and some people translate and some just don't. I remember well, I mean, Anthony Early. I mean, we loved him and I liked the way he played, but it never, so never, um, yeah, never translated into. Do. I, was gonna, I was gonna compare him to that. You know, he seemed a little more smoother than Clay, mm. Clay Anthony Early, but that's the type of guy. He's not gonna have the green light with us to do mm. all those things. So can you catch and shoot? Can you make a quick move to the basket? Because you're not going to be able to hold it and set your man up. Right. Again, but he's not going to be able to play in time either. And I don't got nothing on this guy, but last but not least, we got Kevin McCullough, another point guard, or guard, I should say, uh, that we drafted. I wonder which one of these guys is going to be the next Knicks favorite. <laughs> but like I said, another guard, it seems like we're probably not going to do nothing with him. Yeah, we were just we were just had to find Looks people pretty good, to put man. on the roster. We had to fill out our roster because mm -hmm. our money is tied up up front. So there was no way to go out and get anybody or anything mm -hmm. that could help you on the back end. And you don't even need it no more. You know, I we talked about that a few weeks ago. The days of being 12 and 13 deep, mm -hmm. and Tibbs ain't gonna play him anyway. It, was, it did help for injuries mm -hmm. to keep us on that track when people was getting hurt. Mm -hmm. It did pay off, but now at the end, look at guys like Shake Milton. And then Burke went in the doghouse. Now you got good guys that got to sit. Mm. And that don't sit well, you know, with a lot of people either. Right. So, you know, we, we, we did good. We did good. All right. Next on the list. And listen, don't go crazy. We still on the hunt for a center. And I told y'all when we first started, that's probably going to be the hardest position to get back if we don't sign both of them. And that's going to be the spot that everybody's going to be doubling up on to have an advantage throughout the whole season. And sure enough, this is what's happening. Everybody getting signed back, going to big, get bigger contracts, and we still trying to pick up. Yeah, not necessarily center. getting signed back. Big men, backup centers have been moving. Mm -hmm. One or two went back to their regular teams, but for the most part, everybody mm -hmm. been moving. But what, now, what did I say last week that when we did the show, the draft, the free agency was starting that night at six o'clock, mm -hmm. and I said if we're not gonna, we already know the temperature of Hartenstein. And rightfully so, if he take if he's gonna take that deal, we know that already. Mm -hmm. Let's jump on somebody right now when the backup was plentiful. Mm -hmm. What was we waiting for? <laughs> there was nothing to be waiting. The man was not turning down that type of money. I mean, we see what we was waiting for. We was waiting for that Mikel Bridges that we didn't know that was coming because we didn't have that. Now we were saying that, but I didn't think of Mikel Bridges but was going well, to get traded. As long as, as long as we so did, let's try to reach out to some of those other mm -hmm. people. But then you know what? And the Knicks probably did. I seen a post that said Hardenstein was it was a hard choice and he was upset about it. But when you see where he went, it sure dropped the tape. Yeah, yeah, it dropped the <laughs> tape. But you had to know if you're going somewhere where you, you had still, to, they had to have gotten an inkling that remember they was thinking 2025 20, bill mm -hmm. he was gonna get. He got 29. Y'all knew that. So once you do your research right. and you find out what he getting. Ink that back up center. Now, for me right now, to be honest with you, I just said me, myself, personally, <laughs> I don't really care. I don't really care. I, I want to make sure we keep Mitch in good standings. A backup center is needed, but right now, until the playoffs, it's not needed. Mm. It's not needed until you can roll with you to bring back pressures and you have Sims. You can roll with that, mm. provided Mitch don't have a major injury. Right. But... You can you can roll with that until you get to the playoffs, because mm -hmm. that's when you need that other seven footer. 
in the playoff. You know, Tibbs' whole thing is rim protection. Well, pressures gives you rim protection, but when you got say you got a back to back against Philly, Milwaukee, people like that, now you you running into trouble. And mm -hmm. some of the people that are still available, a lot of them are available through trades. Mm -hmm. Because even Robert Williams, like if a guy like that is still out there, did he sign? I think he signed. Them guys, you got them kind of guys, you got to go get. Yeah, I had a list of people that play like Mitch. Yeah, I had a list list of people all week that um, we was looking at getting. I forgot one of the dudes' name. I should have wrote it down, but well, Kessler out of Utah. Yeah, Kessler. That's and out I of the liked, question. Anyway. I liked him, and that was my favorite out of the two people that they was looking at at the they time. Few. Yeah, yeah. In the beginning of the yeah. and he's on yeah. the table. Nick, Nick Richards, but he's up. He's off the table anyway because you can't mm -hmm. do business with Danny Ainge out in Utah. He, Danny Ainge got a history of sucking every draft pick, everything out that you. Mm -hmm. So that was going to be off the table anyway, unless you really was going to part with another player. Right. You know, um, I was reading something today from the Athletic that Milwaukee's looking to maybe do something with Brook Lopez. Well, we can't do nothing with Brook Lopez because one, he makes too much money, mm -hmm. and it can't be a swap. It can't be a Mitchell Robinson yeah, swap for anybody else. Who, which one we had? Brook Lopez. Yeah, Robinson. He's not playing with what happened there. I kind of like him. Milwaukee, with Milwaukee let him go last year. He went. Some, did he go somewhere else? Yeah, see, people like that, if they out there, they don't hurt you because he's a rebounder and he can score around the basket, mm -hmm. you know, with soft touch. But just go get somebody. Just go get a seven-footer that can get you in the pass. If they get five, six rebounds a game, mm -hmm. they're going to get eight or nine under the tip system because mm -hmm. they're going to be around the rim. So that's not the pressing need. And I'm going to tell you why it's not the pressing need. Mm -hmm. I, don't even care, I, I don't even care the hard sign left anymore because Mitch went healthy. And, and he's not as hurt as much as people making it out to be. Mm -hmm. Last year was probably the worst of his injury, other mm -hmm. than that rookie whatever year. But we bring in a guy, Mitch gonna give you his regular uh, 24 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you say you don't resign Precious, and then you come back with Jericho, and you get 10 or 12 out of Jericho. Mm -hmm. Now you can find another center because you're gonna, you're gonna use um, Randall mm -hmm. in spots, Randall and OG up front. Mm -hmm. You can maybe bring in a guy that's big, that fill a need, that fills some minutes up mm -hmm. for the regular season. It's, it's, it's not it's just not going to matter. Mm -hmm. What matters is what we're doing around the perimeter mm -hmm. of our team. It's not To me, it's not as a pressing need because you got to think about this. If we, we stay under the apron, still can have a chance to end up getting to the second apron, but with some flexibility. So now come December, February, mm -hmm. You got some flexibility right. to go out and get a guy without gutting your team. Because who? There was a talk I saw too on uh, when I was reading it, and they was talking about who was the center. They was talking about backup center. I said, "Oh, that'd be good." But then they talking about swapping him with throwing in um, Divincenzo in the trade. Mm -hmm. I'm like, "Nah, we don't need to do all that." Mitch gonna give us what he could give us. We so heavy around that mm -hmm. that. And we played good, unorthodox. Last year, technically, it was unorthodox. We played small. That was organized chaos. It was no, organized chaos. Yeah, organized chaos. But we was getting away with almost looking like four guards on the, on the floor. Yeah, and it's going like, to be like so, that. And it worked. So, I mean, I'm not worried, man. I was wrong about something last week. What's that? And I'm super wrong. But I said, yo, call the White House <laughs> and get him on the phone. Or better than him. Now, when I say this, might be a bad idea now. Because looking at all the jokes that's flying, and he might be a distraction. I don't know. Having him on anybody's team right now might be a distraction. Because of the jokes, the rumors. I thought it was gone and nobody worried about it. Can he handle that pressure from being in New York? I don't think so. I think he could. I mean, I don't want him. I mean, I would, if we got him, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cry. I mean, listen, every team the White House probably ever been on, as long as I know it, I think they made... At least the playoffs every year, if not the finals. Lakers. Yeah, you look at his he uh he, Magic. He went on, I think it was it was this well. I, I saw it yesterday, but it was him talking, saying that the Lakers said he was a distraction because of him and Rondo. Mm -hmm. They was excluding him and Rondo from a lot of stuff. And watching them, watching every move that they made. Mm -hmm. But I guess he was going around, you know, he was already doing his little podcast stuff. Mm -hmm. And I guess it was getting on their nerves. Mm -hmm. But when he played Playing. But he's probably pulling stuff because um, he was saying himself he would pull the young guys work out with him. Well, they probably was worried about you. Worried about you pulling young guys. Is it to work out with him or is it to work him out? 
What you doing? What you doing, Dwight? <laughs> like I said, I'm, I would want to see it without all the antics. Like, I don't want him to say nothing funny. Just come work, play ball, and that's what you do. Yeah, get it. If you're not going to listen, if you do that, I think all that stuff is locked in my mind. So whatever you do in your personal life is what you do. I don't, I don't care. Well, there ain't going to be that much uh, fallout in New York because we, we, we the fucking capital, bro. His lifestyle. Listen, if, it, if he was doing good, it works out in his favor because we're going to champion you. That's we're going to be like, listen, how y'all yeah. But go out and get a backup. But they got to me, they got to, if you're not going to get a seven, a 6'11", 7-footer, then you got to bring back Precious. Mm-hmm. Everybody, a lot of people, they talking about, um, a lot of them are like 6'8". So mm-hmm. then 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, six, then bring Precious back. Mm-hmm. If that's the case, get get a, now there was all, oh, that's what the other talk was, um, Stewart, the one that got suspended from Detroit. Mm-hmm. They was talking about him and swap it, swap because Detroit looking to get rid of him. So making a deal with DiVincenzo with mm-hmm. him and now nah, I, I would like to have Isaiah Stewart. Mm-hmm. He would be the type of Nick. He would be our type of Nick. He, like Marcus mm-hmm. Smart. DiVincenzo part of the whole operation. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But <laughs> um how he gotta feel like Josh Hart, y'all doing all of this. For the Knicks to make a major move, one of y'all might have to be in it. You or you or Devin Chisholm. So y'all have to be a hush hush. You know, when they was teasing Rant, I'm teasing Robinson, remember on their podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, see you next week if you're here. Hope you're here, joking around. But one of y'all might not be here. <laughs> so y'all better be careful. Go from the Villanova to the Kentucky crew. Yeah. See, that was another thing too. Somebody asked me uh last week um about the why other teams won't duplicate what the Knicks did. And I'm trying to explain to him why other teams can't do it. We go out and get four and five because Ryan might come back just to fill the roster spot. We go out and get four or five from Villanova because they played four, you know, three and four years together. Mm. Kentucky guys, yeah, you can go and get five Kentucky guys, but they didn't play together yeah, no. because they wanted none. So they don't got they don't got that real chemistry mm. that the Villanova boys got. Now, so that's unless, that's the most difficult part. Unless I know we had this conversation a long time ago. Now unless you go get Kentucky coach that coached all these guys at the same time and that can talk to them a certain way. I feel like with the NBA, you can't talk to these players any kind of way. You get these big old contracts and veterans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but if you get somebody that respected their coach, and I'm not saying scared of them, but they're not going to change up anything and can get them to run. All right, run a lap. I want you to, you missing layups? Nah, run. If he can do that, that's a little different. Yeah, I don't think that's ever going to happen, but I think if a team got a young team of players that played together with the same coach. No, nah, that don't always work. Because remember, um, and some of y'all will remember this, before Boston's big three back with Antoine Walker and all them guys, mm-hmm. Rick Pitino came from coaching okay. um, Kentucky, mm-hmm. brought three of his players in. Mm-hmm. Didn't work out. But I'm talking about the <laughs> three top players. Yeah, he, has a coach. he became the coach. Mm-hmm. And then it brought in the same year his rookie guys. And then what did they play? Yeah, mm-hmm. they played, but they just didn't uh, didn't translate over to the mm-hmm. you know good guys too. But they were just too young, wasn't ready, mm-hmm. wasn't ready. But just get a seven footer. We got to get it back up. Make it make it a seven footer. Yeah, somebody that's gonna impact the game. Yeah, because um, just a little bit. They ain't, ain't got to do too much. They ain't got to be the focal point. Yeah, because our overall team is good. Because mm-hmm. you got to. When you're first talking about your team, you got to talk about the starting center. Because you let Drummond go back to the Bulls, and you just could have snatched him up. Wait, now Drummond, is he, is he on uh, Philly? Not the Bulls, I mean Philly. He was on he was on Philly before. Mm. Then he went to the Bulls. Now he's back with, now he's back with Philly. But it was, it was people that y'all could have y'all snatched up. Right. So, hey, it is what it is at this point. That's right, I said it. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> next, on, uh, next on the list. I don't know how this is going to affect the Knicks. Maybe not, but Johnny Bryant is leaving and going to be assistant coach of the Cavs. So I don't know if that takes a hit on our morale or chemistry, or if it just hey, congratulations. Yeah, he was that young guy that knew how to get in the other young guy's ear. Mm. They, they say he was professional. He was detailed and to the point. Mm. Um, as, a, as a trade-off, you remember we brought in Maurice Cheeks. Mm. When he had the interview for the head coaching job, mm. so they had probably 
you know, you got to let the man go out and fly. He was close with, with Donald Mitchell. So, you know, I'm pretty sure it had a lot to do with it. Right. And he's going to help them, of course. Mm-hmm. But it, over the long haul, he's going to, you know, he's going to help them. He's going to help Halliburton. So, I mean, it's not Halliburton. I mean, um, this is the first who, time. Who is Donovan's, uh, who's the other kid on the long side? Yeah. He's going to help Garland, mm-hmm. you know, make more sense of his game. Because to me, Garland's in that same category. I don't care how many times they try to say Maxi is a superstar. Maxi ain't no superstar. We're going to get there. Slow down. Nah, he, he, well, he might get there, but to me. No, no, no. We're going to get there. All right. There. But, but I'm saying he's going to help another guard. Mm. He'll, he'll help Garland. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, over the years, the, the coaching staff, we really want to talk about them because we, we would think, are they even doing anything? This year and maybe even so last year, it's looking like it's translating. You see those assistant coaches on the bench active. You see yeah. them more talking to the players, and the players even mentioning their name. Over the years, you probably just heard a heard, and that's it. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, there's a we are complaining other. about what are they doing. Yeah, there's another help. assistant coach too that that when developing the players. So we still have some in there. Yeah, I don't you know, know the guy's name, but I know the Asian dude that was on there. Yeah. He's on a lot of videos, but he looks like he's really active with the players, yeah. helping them work out, making yeah. sure they. Doing what they're supposed to do, holding people accountable. So hopefully, when uh, uh, Mo Mo Cheeks get there, that he's holding them accountable. Yeah. Um, as well as Johnny Bryant probably was, and hopefully yeah. that doesn't mess up anything. The chemistry. No, I, I. Well, it's always when you use a when you lose a young assistant coach that hurts because then when the coach is screaming and going crazy, that's the person that comes in the locker room and smooths mm-hmm. it over. Yeah. Old older guys not necessarily going to do that, but I did mm-hmm. like. Um, on one of the ESPN shows, and they were talking about the Knicks just find a good young uh, backup center and let Othello Harrington do his magic. So I said, "Oh, okay." So remember, we was always saying that are they letting uh, Harrington teach the big guys because he got down low, but he had jump hook. You know, he was a great scorer down low, but he had down here like a down low move, mm-hmm. quick shot. So it was nice to hear somebody on ESPN give him credit mm-hmm. because, like him, we don't see it. So that, you know, so I mean, our coaches is working. <laughs> so, yeah. Last but not least, topic. I want to say this. Philly, are y'all out of y'all mind? <laughs> Philly makes moves. They get PG and they get Caleb Martin. Good pickups. Good pickups. And they saying, are oh, they contenders? Well, drumming. They beat drumming. They, they, they shooting to come at the Knicks. We the second best team in the East. Celtics was number one in the NBA. We leave number two in the East. And I'm going to be standing by it, and I don't want to hit nothing. See, this is the beauty of it for me is. Yeah, I, Philly, I, want, I want the competition. Philly right? got, yeah, Philly got better. That's what, and that's what we want because now, for the first time, and I don't know how long, and maybe for the first time, well, we could do that with Anthony Mason and them. Mm-hmm. But we got, like, y'all got to match us. Like, we can mix and match. Paul George can't play power forward. He can only play the two or the three. We got guys that we can move around the whole court. We're going to get production out of all of our guys. You start saying dark skin quickly? The whole <laughs> Brunson? Y'all are crazy. It don't even matter if they can Joel hold. And B, we got too many. Can't even. I ain't going to do that. Nah, they got. That's a, I'm about to say, can't even see. That's a good team, but we, <laughs> we people have realized that the Knicks is a good team. Is, our team is deep. But when it comes to Philly, as of right now, as a fan, we want the smoke. But I don't want to hear nothing. PG, what he gonna? He can't guard Randall. No, nah, PG, they're gonna be a good team. We don't, we don't have to gel already. Yeah, he might add three. Nah. No, I'm saying, but this is what we want. Cause look at how fast they counting out Milwaukee. Oh, yeah, they, they just, they Milwaukee. Just, no, but they are. They just, they just count Milwaukee out. They saying that who now is the closest to give Boston a harder fight? Now it's us. Then it's Philly. You know, the people more now mm-hmm. leaning towards Philly. With the, with the additions that they got, and Caleb Martin is a good pickup, but look how deep we are. We got somebody for everybody you mentioned, and our guys are interchangeable. Mm-hmm. I think they do that to Milwaukee because it just looked as sloppy all year long. It looked like they just couldn't get together or figure it out. And, and they're going to figure it out. We know they're going to figure it out. <laughs> we know they're going to figure it out. They're going to figure it out. But when it comes to stack up against the Knicks, I don't want to hear that, Philly. Y'all gonna have to see us multiple times this year. And y'all better be ready. Paul George. Listen, we he he already setting up for the future. He podcasting now. He ain't ready. Well, it's gonna be good. 
Caleb Martin. Y'all was excited. Y'all got Caleb Martin. Like, y'all crazy. That's a good pickup for them, though. That's I'm a solid. Top. It yeah. is. That's not the same. Listen, listen the line. <laughs> because we ain't know what we ain't doing is that we don't have to. Oh, we know the teams are going to get better because teams was watching us. I'm we only watching, watching Boston. Teams was watching us. Turn it now, 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 now they say, okay, the Knicks did this. And then Indiana just picked up somebody else, too, right? I don't know like, Miami. you know, Miami went out and got Burt, Alec Burt, who could help them. Mm-hmm. Teams got better. We we got better. We just got that one addition makes us way better. Mm-hmm. And the injury that subtraction is. don't really hurt us as much as the addition helps us. You know what I mean? We got so, pickups and ice got. We, <laughs> we ready. Nah, it's going to be it's going to be good. When, 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 at the end of the season. Regular season is going to be crazy. That, that, uh, what's that thing called? Um, the, the, the tournament in the beginning? Yeah. That's going to be crazy for the East now. Now I want to win it. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Yeah, look at the Lakers. We, we win it. They what? Well, Lakers. You want, I mean, when you play, you want to win. I think Lakers just ran out of the big, Right. But it takes a lot of energy even to get that. So, of course, you want to win because you got to be competitive. But what it, what it takes out of you, now our big picture one thing we know for sure that at the end of the season, no matter how many minutes Tibbs plays his players, we get better. Our last 20 games, mm-hmm. except for that one year, 20, 25 games under Tibbs, the last games, they're winning records. Mm-hmm. We get stronger as the season go on. So that's also in our favor. Mm-hmm. Somebody beat up on us early in the year, fine. But you got to see us at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. When y'all huffing and puffing, I, I, I deep roster, not interchangeable roster. Mm. <laughs> See, we no other team can really do that for the multiple players the way we can do that. Mm. So I'm not I'm not knocking. I kind of like to see the other team get better because I don't want to hear nobody mouth when they talk about Boston over a foregone conclusion. Well, ain't no foregone conclusion now. Mm. <laughs> not now. If you ask Boston, they tell you the same thing. Yeah. The healthy Julius Randle. Listen. You a, lot of, a lot of these teams are going to be healthy. Nobody's going... Nobody's going into this year, I think, with a major injury. Well, Boston. That we know of. Yeah, Boston. Paul Zingas, he yeah. was already hurt. I know, but. I ain't know. counting Paul Zingas. Well, they didn't worry about him now. Paul Zingas was already hurt yeah. all year long. Yeah. That's yeah. why I'm not really counting Mitch not being there. He would have helped, but he was hurt, like, what, half the year? Yeah, but he when he came back. Randy was hurt half the year. So, all right, cool. Y'all got that. But not everybody else had been healthy at that time. Pacers would have been out of here. I mean, at least we just regular, good enough. Nobody's hurt. You got to be out of here. And now that everybody's coming back strong and healthy, Philly, no, I'm going to tell you. And B got like one or two more years left. That's <laughs> going to be interesting. Paul George got like one injury away. He better not hit his big toe. <laughs> Caleb Martin. <laughs> well, we going to see. We gonna see, but I like I'm talking about now. We, we like our squad. I'm gonna keep that same energy when we come around. Nah, we like our squad. We, we can go up against anybody with this team. Mm-hmm. And right now, if we only got one good center, that's all we're gonna need right Shoot, now. I'm gonna up all the way. Put me on the bench. Nah, I need about goal. right here. I just need about 1.5 mil. <laughs> Four years. I'm good. All right, so <laughs> all right, we wrap this up today. All right. But um, again, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Appreciate mm-hmm. you new subscribers, but we need more. Help us get there. Thanks.